Hey guys, Legend right here, and today I'm rocking my Season 12 themed shirt, and 20 cards are being balanced in Season 12? Well, I mean, not exactly, because 16 of the changes are technically under one balance, but that's besides the point. Hey guys, that's right here, and today I'm going to be going over the balance changes that are arriving in Season 12. Now, I wasn't exactly told when the balances would come out, but it's pretty safe to assume that they will be going live the second day of the season, which would be Tuesday, June 2nd. Now, this meta was dominated by a few specific cards, so hopefully these balances targeted the right ones and will hopefully shift the meta in a better direction. Now, before we get into the balances, if you could please leave a like down below and subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this this one. Also, be sure to check out my socials, links down below, and if you'd like to support me in-game, feel free to use code LEGENDARAY in the shop. The next pass rail is popping up real soon, so if you do decide to buy that, I would greatly appreciate your guys' support. And with all that out of the way, let's get right into the balances. Prince. Hit points plus three percent. So, unlike the dragon season, where they nerfed the baby dragon, for the prince season, they're actually going to give the guy a slight buff. As of now, he's only seen in a few giant decks and a few bait decks, and also suffers a below average use and win rate. This slight buff only adds about 50 hit points to him at tournament standard, so he's not going to be that much stronger, but hey, it's better than nothing, and at least it's not going to be a card that becomes super overpowered in this meta. Royal Delivery. Damage minus 10%. Now the Royal Delivery is a card that has just taken the meta by storm. Doing a large amount of damage for just 3 elixir, this card just got a bit too much value. Therefore, a 10% reduction will mean that the Royal Delivery is noticeably weaker, requiring more shots to take out certain troops. Overall, I think this is a really good change. The card was just honestly a little bit busted and will definitely not be as versatile on defense. That being said, I'm sure it's still going to be used as it still does quite a bit of damage, knocks troops back, and also spawns a royal recruit. Bomb Tower, lifetime reduced from 35 to 25 seconds. The Bomb Tower is by far the most used building in the entire game, and as a whole, it's the third most used card as well. Therefore, a nerf was pretty well deserved for this tower, as its splash damage, tankage, and death bomb makes it such a versatile card to play. Therefore, by reducing its lifetime quite significantly, this card will be much less oppressive on the arena, being able to be taken out a bit easier, thus offering a little bit less defensive value. Earthquake. 50% move speed reduction, removed attack speed reduction. Now this change sounds a little bit confusing, but uh, the Earthquake, oh man, this card is really, really annoying to face. Slowing down all of my defensive units, disintegrating all of my buildings, and allowing all the opponent's troops to reach my towers. On top of all of that, it deals more tower damage than a fireball, meaning that the cycle players could just straight up spell cycle you out. However, 
they are only giving the earthquake a small nerf this time, although it does actually make a bit of a difference. What they are changing is they're making it so that the troops in the earthquake will not slow their attack speed, so a knight would still be able to hit just as fast as it normally would. However, what they are changing is they're making it so that the troops move a bit slower. Think of this kind of like the Ram Rider Snare, which slows units without actually hindering their attacks. This means that a well-placed troop will be able to take out pushes just as effectively as if there was no earthquake there, but when you play something like in the wrong tile, then the earthquake is going to slow the troop down, meaning that it won't be as effective on defense. Standardization, 0.1 second staggered deploy for all swarm troops. Now as for all swarm troops, I'm talking about every troop that consists of two or more units, excluding the skeletons and the skeleton army. This means that some troops, such as the Minion Horde and the Goblin Gang, are getting a deploy time reduction, while other troops, such as the Archers and the Wallbreakers, are getting a new delay. However, I think the biggest change that we will see from this balance is to the three musketeers whose staggered deploy has now been reduced from half a second to just one tenth of a second. This means that the musketeers will spring into action a whole second faster, making them just a bit more potent in the arena. Overall good change, the dev team seems to really like standardization, so I'm all for it. So, those are the cards that are being balanced in June. Of course, be sure to let me know your thoughts on them in the comment section below. Now, let's take a look at how I believe this upcoming meta will be changed once these balances settle in. First things first, I think Bomb Tower and Earthquake will both still be used in the meta. Bomb Tower is pretty much only played reactively, so a lifetime reduction doesn't really make it less effective in that department. The Earthquake still also does an absurd amount of tower damage, and since it slows units a bit more now, it will still be quite effective at slowing a defense and allowing your push to break through. Royal Delivery will also see a bit of decrease in usage. It does just a bit more damage than arrows now, so it's definitely going to be used less, but it still deals more damage, it still knocks troops backwards, and it still spawns a Royal Recruit, so it's definitely a viable and valuable card. That being said, this player here has somehow managed to reach number 4 in the world with a level 11 Royal Recruit, so you know that this is 100% still going to be a viable card after the damage nerf. Now as for archetypes, I don't expect to see much change there. Royal Hog decks will still be viable, Hog Earthquake decks will still be viable, and this deck will still exist to hard counter Expo. The only archetype I think that may slightly change is Miner, especially those decks that rely on the Bomb Tower for defense, as the reduced lifetime does make a difference when it comes to getting as much value out of the Bomb Tower. All in all, I think this is a pretty solid set of balances. However, personally, I would have liked to see small buffs to other splash cards in order to better deal with all of the fireball bait and swarm that is currently in this meta. Especially with nerfs to the bomb tower and the royal delivery, I really would have liked to see more answers rise up in terms of splash. So, what are your thoughts on the balances? Be sure to let me know in the comment section below. Also, in the TV Royale episode that should have released sometime today, there should be a small teaser as to to what's coming in the next Clash Royale update. I don't know if it's just an announcement saying that it's gonna be delayed or if it's something content wise, but if it is, there's gonna be a pinned comment down below where I'm gonna summarize what they show you guys and give you guys some of my thoughts on what it is as well. But unfortunately guys, that's all I've got time for in today's episode. If you enjoyed, please leave a like down below as well as a subscription to my channel. And as always, this is Morning to Ray and I'm signing off. See you guys next time.